What's going on guys? Andrew Pillock Hockey here back again with another video and you guys are seeing the title and you're thinking, man, this guy is a little nuts. Now, let me talk about this for a bit. We'll get into it. Don't you worry. We're going to have a good conversation about this. You, you might think I'm crazy. The people talking about this might be a little crazy, but we're talking about Patrick Kane and the Maple Leafs. We talked about this actually a couple of years ago, I think. Uh, so again, I don't know where this is coming from. I'll be honest with you. I don't think that this is something that's entirely possible, but it, to be fair, somebody recommended that I talk about this and uh, I listen to you guys. So if you're new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe, join the squad. I'd love to have you guys here uh, trying to make this my full time gig. So make sure to stick around. It's free to like and subscribe. I'm talking to you watching. Please do so. Also, if you want 20% off at Manscaped, use code APH. That's 20% off at Manscaped and free shipping with code APH, and we'll get to that later in the video, but Patty Kane, Patrick Kane, one of the most prolific and high-skilled players in the history of the United States hockey program, in maybe NHL history, definitely in the past 10 to 15 years. This is one of the most interesting players that we've seen handle a puck ever, technically, right? So, the Maple Leafs having interest in him wouldn't shock me. He's still a free agent, and uh, we know that he's probably not going to be ready for, you know, a good portion of this season. But there's been some talk on TSN, and I tried to do a little bit of research because I think it kind of got swept under the rug, about the possibility of Patrick Kane maybe being a target for the Maple Leafs later in the season if they make some moves if they accrue some cap space if they you know create cap space via a trade or two maybe there's some players that don't work for the team midseason they move on from them I just want to we'll start with this I myself don't think that this is something that is going to happen anytime soon okay this is just my general opinion and I respect that you guys even clicked on this for my opinion but Mid-season, if Patrick Kane isn't signed, there's going to be a laundry list of teams. There's going to be so many teams that are going to be interested in this guy's services. Now, I'm just going to bring you to the quote that kind of stirred up some stuff here. And I'm not recommending this website or anything like that. It's no disrespect. This is just the best bold quote that I could get for you guys on this screen right now. Uh, and it's in, in an interview on TSN 1050, Poulin said... If they can get under the cap and accrue some cap space for players like that, they'd be looking shorter term with him. Now, that would be a decision for Patrick Kane. Would he want to sign for the remainder of the season to prove he's healthy? Or would he want something longer? That will be the question. It's not about money for him. Because we know Patrick Kane's made his money over the career, but there's a lot over his career, but there's a lot to unpack in a quote like that. And uh Basically, Dave Poulin has kind of walked it back a little bit and saying like he's not saying the Leafs would definitely be interested, but there's been talk uh, over the last like I'd say month or so that the Leafs would probably in be interested if they had a little bit more money. And there was talk last year that Patrick Kane himself might have been a little bit interested in Toronto had they had the money for him, but nothing ever materialized. Now, I don't think the style of play really fits Patrick Kane with Toronto. Um, at this point, he's he's a slower guy, and I think the Leafs are trying to build up that bottom six as like a speedy, fun-to-play-with type of team. But you can't discount the way that Patrick Kane has put up points, and even though he's a slower guy, he still find ways finds ways to put up big numbers, and I, I don't see why the Leafs wouldn't be interested in that. Taking a quick break to let you guys know about the sponsor of this video, Manscaped. Hockey season is coming up, and we all know it's important to stay fresh and protected on and off the ice. And well, Manscaped is here to help us do that. I've got the Performance Package 4.0 with me. I've even got my travel bag, and it's perfect for the dressing room. Inside holds the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. It features a cutting-edge ceramic blade 
to help reduce accidents down there using its advanced skin safe technology. It's also waterproof and has an LED spotlight for a more precise shave. Next up is a game changer and that is the Weed Whacker Nose Hair Trimmer. The Weed Whacker is also waterproof and has proprietary skin safe technology. That's gonna help nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate nose holes. You're also getting the Crop Preserver below the waist deodorant and Crop Reviver below the waist toner. And like I mentioned earlier, Manscaped threw in two free gifts with the Performance Package 4.0. That is the boxers and the shed travel bag. Get 20% off and free shipping with my code APH at manscaped.com. That's APH for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Now back to the video. But the fact of the matter is, is that Patrick Kane is not going to be taking some significant discount, even if he signs midway through the season. I'm not really sure, and I can't predict what number that would be, but it's still going to be a significant amount where you're still, as the Maple Leafs, going to have to clear out space. And again, it, it, I'm not saying that this is something that the Leafs should entertain, but if they were to, like, we might as well just take a look at his numbers for the hell of it, right? So he is 34 years old. He's unsigned right now. Look at those career earnings, $115 million. But to say that Patrick Kane doesn't have, you know, the the – the, the, the skill or the numbers to, to still play in the NHL, it would be silly to say because we're talking about a guy that coming off of an injury had 45 points in 54 games with the Blackhawks, 12 and 19 with the Rangers, and then another six in seven games in the playoffs. And the year before that, he had 92 points. And these Hawks teams haven't been good. Like, Patrick Kane hasn't had a season under 50 points since the 2012-2013 season, like in total, right? Because obviously these these two these two here get totaled together, so it's over 50 points, over 60 points. Like this is a player that isn't really on the steep decline. Like he already apparently feels good. He's had surgery, I believe it was on his hip. He feels really good. He says that everything's going according to plan. He feels good, whatever. Like, this is a good hockey player. But the Leafs would only be interested in a guy like this, in my opinion, if come trade deadline time, if they're not finding the players that they're looking for at the, the trade, you know, piece, whatever. Like, if, if they're not... If teams are looking for too much, like they don't want to overpay for players, if they, if they don't feel like they're getting good value for, and, and they're trading away too much, getting a guy like Patrick Kane, you know, quote unquote for free because you're just signing him even though you're paying him money, but Toronto's never had a problem with giving money to guys. It's It's kind of a home run in a sense because even if it doesn't work out, okay, you got Patrick Kane, but you didn't trade anything for him, whatever. But this is why I'm making this video now, because maybe I predict this later down the line. But I think that Patrick Kane probably won't sign unless he feels like he has a chance to win uh, and that the opportunity is good for him. Uh, this is why I think that Toronto probably isn't the best fit either, because I just I don't see how he would even enter their top six. Uh they, they just have guys that are younger and are probably, you know, faster. And it just, it, it probably doesn't make a ton of sense. Unless Patrick Kane comes in and he looks amazing after this surgery. And, you know, maybe this is exactly what he needed to, like, give him that boost for another three or four years to be an effective player. Like, I just don't see how this guy would be effective for the Leafs in a role that makes sense. Because a third and a fourth line... First of all, a fourth line is not going to work. A third line is probably going to get matchups against teams, you know, better lines to to be a defensive matchup and, and you know, to be that physical speed type of aspect. And Patrick Kane doesn't check those boxes. So I'm going to really quickly show you guys here the cap friendly page. And we always go back to this when we're evaluating whether or not a player would make sense on the team. They They still need to shed $3 million. Now, there's obvious ways that the Leafs can do this, right? And I'm not saying this would happen at the beginning of the season. But And keep in mind, the Leafs are also going to be using LTIR for, for the entire season. So that's not going to really help them. But they're they're probably going to end up sending down guys like Gambrel, 
Uh, they're, they're probably going to end up sending down Holmberg because I don't think they've got a spot for him just yet. They're going to have to make a decision on Nick Robertson. Uh, you're obviously going to see a guy like Martin Jones end up uh, on waivers because they are not going to carry three goaltenders. So maybe he gets claimed, maybe he doesn't. I'm not sure. And then you're probably looking at trading or sending down a guy like Connor Timmins. So let's just say that he gets sent down, right? So the Maple Leafs are just barely making it with a bare minimum roster. Now, I'm not saying this is what the lines would look like, but they would have to accrue a decent amount of cap space throughout the season going into the deadline. And by then, other teams might want Patrick Kane. He might already sign. I mean, there's been rumors about the Red Wings. Maybe that's something that happens. People have said, what if he just goes back to Chicago and plays with Bedard? That would be a full circle moment. Like, there's a bunch of different things up in the air, but I'm not too sure. Again, I'm just talking about this because it was recommended, and of course, it's still the off season. We might as well have a little bit of fun, but I just I don't see how this really entirely makes sense for the Maple Leafs. Uh, I also don't really know how this makes a ton of sense for a guy like Patrick Kane. He won't be getting the ice time uh, that I think he would want, and that's why he's probably better suited to play with teams like Chicago or like a Detroit that could use a guy to come in and boost some of their younger talent and boost some of their, their top two lines to give a different look. So, again, this is just like a fantasy video. Um, I like doing videos like this every once in a while. But again, like I guess sound off in the comments. Tell me tell me what you guys think about a potential Patrick Kane to Toronto rumor uh, at the deadline. Like I, I'm not even considering this happening anytime soon. So what would you think about Patrick Kane going to the Maple Leafs like, you know, way down the line if, if he's still available? So like I said, comment down below. If you are new here, make sure to like and subscribe. Join the squad. I'd love to have you guys here. Again, I'm trying to make this my full-time gig. Um, I'm really, really trying hard to do this. So using 20% off the code APH at Manscaped really, really would help as well. Um, and yeah, again, I uh, just want to dedicate this one to uh, my dog who passed away recently. Drewby, love you so much. Uh, definitely missing her so much. And it's been tough to make these videos. So go easy on me, guys. I love and appreciate you. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video or stream. Peace.